You miss me? I miss all of y'all. Hey. All y'all girls standing together hey. like that. I can't hey. take it. My name is Whit Heiler. I work at Cornet, an ad agency in Lexington, Kentucky, um, the kick-ass state. And uh, I'm here to talk about how to sell your ideas internally. My road into advertising is, was pretty untraditional, uncommon. Um, I spent most of my 20s in the car business where I started out as a salesperson and um, eventually was a GM of a uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep store there in, in uh, Nicholasville, Kentucky. And then after that, I opened up a, um, I started a clothing brand with another buddy where we were selling shirts and then went on to be a partner in a Vespa scooter store where I was selling scooters. And um, the scooter store, I ended up selling my, my share of that, that store to my partner, and the clothing business is no longer. About five years ago, I got into advertising where I've been selling ideas. So when I first got the Cornet, um, the biggest thing I, I noticed was it's really hard to sell your <laughs> your ideas, you know, to get your ideas even to the client. You have a, a whole gauntlet of very smart, talented people, um, lots of titles, you know, art directors, creative directors, chief inside officers, chief sitting bull. There's all sorts of these, you know, titles you've got to get your ideas through. And it's, um, notice it's very competitive. Some of these people are very conservative. Um, there's a lot of egos. It, just takes a lot of work to get your idea through this gauntlet of people. So looking at the problems, um, you probably don't have sales experience. You might have sales experience, but a lot of the creatives that I talk to don't have much sales experience. A lot of the account planners that I talk to don't have a whole lot of sales experience. Strategists, they don't have a lot of sales experience. And a lot of agencies don't teach, you know, train how to sell your ideas. Um, so that's one of the problems. Probably heard this, no, the client will never go for that. The client is too conservative. You hear that kind of stuff all the time. So step one in selling, you know, your ideas to your team internally would be to build value in your idea. Um, when we were in the, when I was in the car business, we had, a, it was, depending on where you worked, it was like a seven to ten step process on, on how to sell a car, the road to the sale, the ten step process. And one of those steps in, in that process was what's called a walk around. And imagine, you know, if your table is a car, you take the customer and you walk them all the way around the car and you show them features and then you follow that feature with a benefit. This car's got analog brakes. These are great because they do this. This, you know, this, got, this car's got this kind of headlights. These are great because they do this. So every feature you show them, you show them a benefit. So it's true with advertising and selling your ideas as well. When I like to frame up my ideas to sell, I usually go through a, a what, how, and why process. What the idea is, how it gets executed, and why it's going to work. And when I look at those, you know, the why is, are, are the benefits. That's where you build value. And, um, you know, so it's why the idea is going to drive sales. Why, you know, people are going to care about the idea. Why the idea ladders up with a creative uh, strategy. Um, why people are going to share this. Why the press would write about this idea. So... And, you know, in building out those ideas, I really pack them full with a lot of whys. And all those whys are benefits which build value. And the more value you have in something, the easier it is to sell. So step two, sell your idea as a press headline. Um, it's never been easier to earn media um, for a brand. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just so easy. And 
everybody wants to be famous. You know, the brand wants to be famous. The CMO wants to be famous. Your agency wants to be famous. Your boss wants to be famous. If you could frame your idea as a press headline, you've got a, a really good shot with selling it. Step three, overcome objection. That's a big part of sales. Um, when you're looking, you know, you kind of got to anticipate what the negatives are going to be. Hopefully in your whys, you've created enough, you know, why this is going to work that you aren't going to have too many objections. But you need to be prepared for those objections, kind of anticipate what the negative, negative could be and be ready to overcome those. And a lot of times, you know, if somebody says, you know, no, you know, you follow it with a why. And then from there, you work on overcoming that objection. It's a big part of sales. Step four, build excitement. Um, excitement is contagious. Passion, excitement, it goes a, a really long ways. And if you're excited, they're going to be excited. So think about that when you're pitching ideas, whether you're pitching it to your team um, or you're pitching it to the client. I mean, excitement is huge. And if you can get them excited, I, you know, if I got an idea I'm really passionate about, I love it, I'll sometimes stand up dropping F-bombs, you know, getting everybody all hyped up, uh, you know, making sound effects, and that kind of stuff, it just, it gets people pumped up. And hopefully, if you get them all pumped up, they're going to be like, hell yes, let's do this. And then that excitement's going to carry on through to the, uh, to the client as well when your team gets ready to pitch those ideas. So step five is be persistent. That's a big part of sales. You know, you want to be persistent yeah, that dude was so persistent in all three of those Taken movies. He always got his daughter, got his wife. Whoever was gone, he would get them. Um, but yeah, it's, persistence is a huge part of sales. You know, you, you can't take no for an answer, you know, if you're passionate about it. And, it, you know, you don't want to be annoying, but you do want to be persistent. And sometimes it takes asking the same question, uh, you know, 10 different times before you can get an, you know, get a yes out of them. So, and, you know, asking it in 10 different ways. I mean, I would get creative with that. Um, but persistence is a big, a big step. And with that said, know when to fold them. Because um, sometimes you just hit it, you know, it's not going to work. Just give up. And you got to see the signs. And if it's not going to work, just, you know, back to the drawing board and come up with something better but um, you know take it as far as you can but know when to fold them step six use influencers George Clooney he's a beautiful man wouldn't you all agree very influential and I, I'm sure you all are familiar with using influencers in advertising uh, marketing your brand using influencers it's it's a pretty popular thing to do these days and it's easy to do with social media but there's a lot of influencers within your organization or within your agency um, that you can use to help sell your idea to the bigger team. And I've done that a lot at Cornette. It's just, um, you know, if I've got an idea that I'm really passionate about, I'll I'll, that I'm in love with, I'll, uh, I'll pre-pitch it um, to some people that, uh, that I think are influential within the agency. And then when we go to the meeting to discuss ideas and brainstorm and all that, a lot of times they'll end up helping me get that idea through because I've already pre-sold them on it. So use influencers within your own organization. Step seven is discuss, you know, instead of killing this idea, how can we make it work? Um, and a lot of times, you know, this is where the best ideas come from. You've got a great idea. You've got the great bones for an idea but you just you know, can't seem to get it all the way through to the client. And if you love it, you know, sit down and let's talk about it and build on it and try and figure out how to make it work. Um, so discuss it. And those were the seven steps. The three takeaways that I think for this, um, selling your ideas internally would be think of your ideas as a product. They're not gonna sell themselves. You guys sell products all the time. You know, these ideas, you've gotta get out there and sell them. Um, another takeaway would be the why builds value in your idea. The whys are so important. And it, you know, the more whys that you can pack your idea, you know, that with, you know, you've got the what it is, how it works, 
and this is why it's going to work. The more of those whys, then the less you're going to, you know, you're not going to have to be as persistent on selling it. You're not going to have to overcome as many objections. This, you know, if you can build a lot of value in that idea, it's going to sell itself. And, you know, that's, that's what you want. And that's what we did with, with cars, is you just sit there and you build as much value in that vehicle as you possibly can to that consumer. And then when you go sit down at the table, they, they want it. You know, they feel like they need it, and the sale is a lot easier. And then three is, the discuss, you know, discuss how to make your ideas work. I think that's key is, is um, you know, don't take no for an answer. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's see how we can uh, get this thing to work. And, you know, if, it, if you hit a dead end and it doesn't, come up with something better, you know. Back to the drawing board. Don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions for Whit? Wow, that was fun. We have a question over here. Okay, I think we have a, someone's going to run a mic down, but I think the question was, what was the hardest idea to sell through for you in your experience? Can, and can you talk about uh, some of the creative that you've done also? Well, and you know, we did um, a campaign for Lexington, Kentucky. Visit Lex is one of our clients. And... It was, the, the campaign was all about locals and, you know, having that kind of local experience, local suggestions. We used locals in all the ads. And for a social campaign, I had this idea to get, um, it's called Share the Lex, and it was a hashtag, Share the Lex. And we wanted to encourage, you know, all of Lexington be, to be our, our brand ambassadors, to be ambassadors of the city and share their experiences and invite their friends and family to come to Lexington. And um, when I first pitched that idea to the team, uh, they weren't really, you know, like, you know, no, you know, it's hard to get people to use hashtags. And it's, um, you know, there are some other objections. But we ended up getting it pushed through. And it's, in, you know, it's about almost three years later, and it's still a really successful social campaign. I mean, I think there's close to 100,000 you know, Instagram photos tagged with Share the Lex, and they use that content, and the locals are inviting their friends and family, you know, to visit all the time, so. I don't know. That was <laughs> one example. Yeah, any other question over here? Uh, Aaron's got a mic for you. Hi, um, how did you end up transitioning into advertising from what you were doing previously? So, I was in the car business, and then I got into this clothing brand. I mean, if, if you know anything about the car business, it's, it's insane hours. It's like, you know, it's not too different from advertising, but it's, it's, it's a really bad lifestyle kind of business. Um, lots of smoking and drinking coffee, you know, 12 hour days and uh, six, seven days a week, but um, really good money. But anyway, so I, I wanted to do something more creative. I had this idea for a clothing brand and my wife was like, you know, go for it. I don't like, you know, I never see you anyways with the car business. And I, could, I sold her on the fact that I could make millions with this clothing business. And um, so I got into that, and it, and it did great. We did some, it really taught me a lot about guerrilla marketing through that brand. We did some promotions. Um, did a yeah, I did a thing called shot up shirts where we shot shirts up with guns and then sold them. You couldn't do that today, but back in like 07, you could do that. And, and the New York Times wrote about it, and it kind of, the brand got going. Then in 2008, um, it fizzled out. And that's when I got into the Vespa business. And that was great, but it just, I had a partner and wasn't making any money, so I needed some money. That brand, Victors and Spoils, had just started up, the crowdsourcing agency in Boulder. And they had all these briefs where you could, um, submit ideas and get money. And I was like, I've got ideas and I need money. So I started responding to all these briefs and then started winning them and started win you know, getting paid from that and that was great. And my wife, who I work with, she was already in advertising. And she was like, you know, you don't need another business. You need to, a steady paycheck. Why don't you, you know, you know you, you've got great ideas. Why don't you come work at Cornette with me? So I did. And then I was about three months into Cornette and I started another business, which is doing great. But it's, uh, 
So I kind of juggle my time between this business, Kentucky for Kentucky, and then Cornette. So. Okay. Anything else? One last question. We have 23 seconds left on the clock. Kentucky yeah. for Kentucky, um, we promote Kentucky. We're kind of like Kentucky's guerrilla marketing team. And we, we, we promote Kentucky through products that we sell, uh, projects, um, social media. We do art, a lot of articles about Kentucky. What was the candle that you guys made? The oh, yeah. Candle. We've had a lot of fun projects. The, the brand started as an agency side project when I... I was like three months into Cornette, and um, we tried to crowdfund a Super Bowl commercial for, Ken for Kentucky through Kickstarter, and we raised 100 grand of the 3.5 million we needed. <laughs> and then after that, we rebranded Kentucky without Kentucky's permission. We said that uh, Unbridled Spirit, which is their current slogan, is out, and Kentucky Kicks Ass is in. And yeah, then from then we've just, we've done all sorts of, we, we've made these fried chicken scented candles that are really popular. Uh, we've made, we play a lot off of KFC and the, you know, fried chicken, Kentucky. We made uh, gold plated Kentucky fried chicken bone necklaces that we sell. And they're all, they're great, like kind of products that market us in Kentucky. They get a lot of buzz online. Um, and, you know, horse humping socks. We've got all sorts of fun products. So. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks, Whit. That's unfortunately all we have yeah. time for. Let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, is, are there.